Welcome to Doc's Lab and our second Master Series. Welcome to Friday night's video and our second master series. I do believe this is the 94th video in our second master series, the 43rd video on basic processors, the sixth video on sculpting processors. In this video, we want to talk about how we are going to stage this. This is a huge problem because of a couple different issues. The first area of staging is it's pretty obvious that you're going to stage individual tracks, then subgroups, and then the mix. You may do a little bit of all this type of work that we've been talking about or utilizing these tools in those areas. But the biggest thing that we're going to be talking about is stages of how to apply this and how to set up some kind of workflow where you utilize this in stages. Then this can be very difficult. This is something you really need to work on because each time you utilize these tools, it can be a totally different situation and a totally different application. And so you're trying to say you're going to go do noise and then saturation, then distortion, then you're going to mess with the harmonic content in that order or reverse of that order. You want to put harmonic content on there and then add some distortion and see how much saturation you can bring into it or and then put noise into it or you're going to jump around in there and put some other order together, it's very difficult to tell you which way to do that. Because I've found that a lot of times that I, I will normally add some noise and then I'll do saturation, then I may do some distortion or harmonic distortion, and then I'll mess with the harmonics. But sometimes I do the exact reverse of that, depending on how well I can hear it in my mind what I'm shooting for, and how well I'm able to determine what it needs, and how much experiment I have to do to try to get done what I'm trying to do, which sounds funny, but being a second, a next level master audio engineer, that sometimes it's not. Sometimes you really have to look at whatever situation and application that you are in and trying to work on and sit down and think about what all am I really trying to get done? What am I trying to get done here? You know, I mean, when I'm in there trying to get these things done, that you know, you really have to think about, you know, being able to hear the future of what you're trying to get and then being able to be a good enough audio engineer to know which tools are going to help you get there. So then you would be utilizing those tools in a staging type of situation that suits that situation or application. And then sometimes you might be, well, I know it sounds really good. All I really want to do is a little bit of noise or all I want to really want to do is mess with the harmonic content. And then I'll see what I might have to do after that. Or I might want to add just a little saturation to it. And then we'll see what happens after that. Or I know, I really know it needs a little distortion. I'm trying to gritty it up a little bit. And then after I gritty it up a little bit, then I'll see what else I need to do to it. You know, it's very much something that you have to take into consideration so you don't get lost in that because I normally try to look at it as what does it need and then trying to figure out how best, how best to approach it to see what kind of, how the staging should work. Because, you know, the typical staging would be add a little bit of noise to get to add noise content you want, then add the saturation to fix saturation issues, then distortion, if, if any, and then adjusting harmonic content. But sometimes you don't really hear it really well and you've got done doing equalizing and you're going, well, you know, maybe I'll work on the harmonic content first and it may cause me to go back and readjust my equalization, it may cause me to go back and readjust things because as you do this, it can cause you to take some steps backwards to readjust things that you've already done to make things work together. 
that two steps forward, two steps back idea happens a lot as you become a master audio engineer because you go back and fine tune things. Oh, I did this, so I'm going back and then I'm coming through it again to uh, readjust it to where now it needs adjustments farther back and things I've already done. But trying to get a staging you know, situation set up for that, it's very difficult. And it's very much going to depend on you and how well you can hear what you're trying to do. You know, sometimes there's been times I'd be like, well, I'm not really sure, you know, because sometimes it works backwards. I, I There's been times where I thought, it really needs a little bit of brown noise in there in the lower end. And I come to find out that was wrong, that I needed some blue noise and I had to low pass filter it or high pass filter it in the upper end because it smoothed out the upper end and I didn't really need to fuss with the lower end but my brain was telling me that's what I needed to fuss with until I began experimenting around with it and it turned out that the blue noise that's a lot harsher actually you know worked to smooth out the upper end a little bit because it was out of phase with the noise that was on the track and in the capture that had a smoothing effect that you know caused me to rethink what I was doing so you know, obviously that sometimes you get it right off and sometimes you just don't. And the better you get, the better you'll get at going, no, I got a pretty good understanding of what I need to do there. So I'm going to do this first and I'm going to see if it needs that. Then I'm going to see if it needs that. That workflow and that staging mentality of which one to do first and how you go about working through those processors to enhance or fix problems or any of the things we've talked about is going to take time. You know, a lot of times that I'll tell people that are beginning, you know, after you get done with your EQ work, do your, you know, a little bit of your harmonic work. You're going to add or attenuate some harmonics in there, you know, with your software or with trash or something like that. And then, you know, see, does it need some distortion? Do you know, roughen it up or some or even it out? Because sometimes that distortion will have phase with it. And they know work on your saturation and then noise lasts. That way you're basically bringing, you know, the less audible things in later. Does that make sense? And, you know, the things that are most audible you're working on first and then work on the things that are more subtle underneath it afterwards. As you get to be a better audio engineer, I've learned I can do that backwards because I know that I add a little bit of saturation. It's taking care of that. And then I know the saturation is going to come in there and take care of that. And then I know the little bit of distortion is going to do that. And then I adjust the harmonic content. And then I might have to go back and rework my EQ a little bit because to take, because sometimes all these things cause you to have to rework things especially equalization because these things are definitely all going to affect the equalization balance of whatever you're working on. So you really need to take that into consideration and really work on it. You know, as you get better and better and better and experiment with it, that you will find that you start to understand why I tell you that, because the more you run into different situations and different sounds and different, you know, a mix or a subgroup or a single track, you know, that you're going to look at it a little bit different and start analyze what does it need and then honing your skills at guessing what it needs and then seeing if you're right or not and then experiment around no, no, no that didn't exactly do it let me try something else and you know because sometimes like I said sometimes you think one thing but it really something else is really going to what's be going to be helpful to it which is sometimes even still I get shocked by it I just be like oh, why does that make it sound better you know you would think that is not going to make it sound better but sure enough it sounds better so you know you really got to take that in consideration and I, most of the time my workflow is laid out like that because I figured out that works best. That way that I don't get lost in it. Does that make sense? Because otherwise I start, you know, bouncing around too much. Because once you start trying to do the things we're talking about with the tools we're talking about, you may bounce around it. You've done one, you add some of the other ones, some of the other things, some of the other thing, then you're bouncing back to that one, bouncing back to that one, readjusting that, adjusting this other thing, and da da da. Until you get it worked out to where, yeah, right there. Okay, good. Yeah. You know, I mean, I know that sounds funny, but that is a lot of times the best approach. 
you know, the better you get at hearing it and know what your target is and get more experienced at doing it, the better that your workflow will come with it because you'll have a better understanding of what those things are doing to whatever application or situation you're in because you start to gain experience in those areas and aren't experimenting around so much because you know, I'm trying to get this done. I know from experience, I use a little bit of brown noise. I, I low pass filter in the low end and bring it up a little bit. And yeah, that's exactly what I'm trying to do. Oh yeah, that helped now I get to my saturation, you know, something like that. And you start to know. So just kind of take that in consideration so that whenever you're talking about how you should apply it and in what stages that, you know, that's going to really be up to you and your experience and how much experimenting you've done, how much research you've done and how much time you've spent utilizing those tools will come into play. And the fact of understanding you may be bouncing around a little bit, trying to readjust things as you go along will really help you get through that hurdle of trying to figure out which one to do first. When we go into these processors, are probably noise and then saturation and then distortion and harmonic work, but not necessarily in that order. So don't think that's what you're supposed to do because you're supposed to do work and work on your workflow and your abilities and honing your abilities to where you are being able to target before you ever even start what you're trying to do and that will dictate your workflow and how you stage it. So I certainly hope that helped you and I will see you in the next video.